Let's look at the budget with Ben Oquist from the Australia Institute. David Gazar, DPG Advisory Director. David, first to you. Are you comfortable with the amount of spending we're seeing? Basically deficits as far as the eye can see. Uh, well, traditionally, you know, the, the, the Liberal Party has built um, into, its, into its budgets um, spending restraint. But I think we all know this has not been normal times. And, I, and, and I'm persuaded with the argument that says if you don't spend now coming out of a, a, a global crisis around health, you will not have the capacity to rebuild the economy later down the track. So you're, you are using what's been in the war chest to get us through the pandemic. And if we go back to the last budget, you know, no one was as confident as the PM and the Treasurer about a V-shaped recovery, which has occurred. And, and now it's about securing people's health and their jobs into the future so you can rebuild that, uh, that, that economy later while protecting people's livelihoods and their, and their, their lives. So it, this is like expenditure after a war, which, again, the PM suggested last night with the Menzies and Holt budgets. It's unusual times. People are worried about their jobs. People are worried about their health. And that's the responsibility of government. Set aside the ideology about, you know, where we sit on, on fiscal constraint. Well, that was the message from John Howard to Josh Frydenberg at the peak of the crisis. Mm. And Josh Frydenberg reiterated that today at the press club. It doesn't leave Labor with much room to move. I guess one area is that they will commit to a national quarantine facility, you would have thought, in the Albanese budget reply. I, I don't know that, but I guess that that will be the case. Yeah, I, I think there'll be some stuff on housing and some stuff on um, uh, climate in the budget reply. I think one thing, you, uh, I think they think the, the link between climate and jobs can be, climate action and jobs can be a winner from them, for them. And I think that's, you know, a, a new course that Albanese and Bowen have been charting, so I'm expecting more on that. And there's nothing in this budget to lower electricity prices or, or lower emissions. Uh, I think, uh, big picture, it is a Labor-style budget um, delivered by Frydenberg, and he's been congratulated for that and congratulated for um, kind of slaying the debt and deficit bogeyman, not just for the V-shaped recovery, um, but for the long term. Uh, we're going to have uh, uh, eye-watering, as some people put it, debt and deficits for the next little while. And, and as, he's, as, as the Treasurer has right, rightly pointed out, that's not a problem. Um, the economy needs that support. But... I think Labor's attack line is that it's taken a crisis to do something about aged care, even though the aged care reforms aren't enough, is quite a good line, um, and that it's taken this crisis to do these big reforms that Labor would have normally done, and it's taken this crisis um, to do to get rid of the debt and deficit bogeyman that Labor would have done, I think, are quite powerful. Big picture, I think that the, there's, there's one economic problem at the heart of this budget, and it goes to the fact that the, there's a really heroic... Uh, forecasts on consumer spending. And th that's what's predicted to grow at 5.5% over the course of the next year. And that's what's going to underpin the economic growth the budget seeks to make. Consumer spending has already underscored the most of, most of the recovery in the second half of last year. Yet, retail sale figures were down half a percent um, for, the, for the March quarter. That was just revealed two days before the budget. And the budget has record low wage growth predicted. In fact, uh, over the course of two years, a cut in real wages. Now, where is that consumer growth going to come from if wages are, are, are so low and government is starting to withdraw some of its income support? So I think that's the economic problem with the budget. I, I want to pull Ben up on something that goes back to something he said earlier and ties into what you said to start, uh, KG. The, the foundations of what we saw with aged care were really laid out under the Howard Costello years through the intergovernmental report, um, where we identified what would happen in aged care if we didn't provision for it at the time. That process started, but we know we've had a demographic bulge come through. People are living longer. The cost of medicine is rising, and we're now encountering that. The measures that were put in place back then wisely, were spent through the, the, the global fiscal crisis, which has left us now with a legacy of aged care, which is in disrepair. That is going to require spending through the out years. There's no doubt about that. But I think the government, again, has identified that as a critical need and has spent accordingly. I mean, you can't get away from that. There no, are, well, there's new needs for flexible funding across all of aged care that is 
going to require maintenance. It's going to, it's going to require the other, contribution. The other thing that's going to require that maintenance, the Prime Minister really positioning him, himself as saying, look, I don't want to fight. I'm not fighting Labor. I'm fighting the virus. Yeah. Almost taking the mantle from the state premiers, successful premiers at recent elections. It, it, so this it, it, is, sounds like a very good election message. It is too. a really good point, and, and, and we've discussed this over months. The virus is not sort of an ideological foe. I mean, these people who sort of light their hair on fire about freedoms that are lost and masks and borders, the virus doesn't respect that. It has been a global challenge, and governments who've lived up to their responsibilities with their communities have set aside the, the, the things that would normally divide them and work together, which we have in Australia largely. There's been some differences, but we've worked together to defeat that together. It is still a major concern, as we've seen in India. It sounds a very potent message to me. Um, having seen so many recent state elections, mm. the incumbent wins, mm. the Prime Minister wanting to step into that and say, look, this is the message. Mm. I'm fighting the virus. I'm the I'm the the guardian of yeah, and I, of I, a, a nation that's free of it. And and look, um, incumbents have done well in the middle of a pan pandemic, and that's why Labor thinks that there's going to be an election more likely to be this year than next year because it does incumbents better to do it in the middle of the crisis rather than as we come out of it. I know the government sources and most of the media think the election's more likely next year, but I do think there's a worry that. Um, uh, and Dave is right, the government's done something in aged care, a third of what's required, but something, and they're addressing a big problem. But I do think there's a worry that it's focused on the short term and not the long term. The big thing missing from this budget is the tax reform to pay for these spendings uh, and help support a state that's the bigger to do these in the long term. And there's no tax reform. We've got Band-Aid solutions like um, the extension of the low and middle income tax offset. We've got Band-Aid solutions like the investment asset write off when, when you and, say and, and tax reform you're no, saying tax rises right? well what about you're coming out of a well, uh, you're, well, you're coming the, out of a recession you want to lift taxes that's I'm not I'm just saying in the long term we need to look at taxes australia now has a tax okay. system basically 19th century we don't look at uh, property taxes or resources or carbon pricing all a, the modern things we don't look at we need a, to we've got a wrap and Sorry. Uh, no, lovely chat ben david great to see you both thanks, thanks for your company this afternoon Bottom 20% uh, uh, get nothing. They're really unfair tax cuts. People want to see much stronger action from the government when it comes to climate change. It's no coincidence that we have a wages crisis in Australia. Transitioning to net zero emissions, it doesn't seem like there's much room for gas.